everyone. I just graded or finished grading your Literary Analysis 1 on fiction and wanted to offer a few words for uh, things to work on for essay number two, which you're writing for poetry. So I see that a lot of you are following the outline template that I placed on Blackboard, which is great. You are including that uh, hook, you're using the hat mat system, and you are using topic sentences that help support your thesis statement with a couple of passages per paragraph that help support the main points, that help support the thesis. So those are all good things. Your organization looks great and your use of the text looks good as well. Some things that I'd like you to take note of are number one, formalizing your diction. And by diction we are simply talking about word choice, so the words that we choose to use when we write. In essays of this nature, literary analyses or any kind of analysis paper, you want to try to formalize your diction by first getting rid of personal pronouns like I, me, and my. So get yourself out of the paper. Also getting references like you and your or second person pronouns out of the paper as well. So avoid using direct references to yourself or to your reader. You're going to write it in a slightly more objective, formal, clinical fashion as though you are providing analysis for somebody to pick up and read and decide whether they want to agree upon or not. This doesn't mean that you need to be stuffy or sound too formal, but removing some of those phrases that we use in more everyday conversation will help you to formalize your diction. So in addition to getting rid of I's and me's and my's and these and you's and yours, also being aware of words like very, really, huge, big, awesome, amazing, stuff, and things are words that I'd like you to try to eliminate from your academic essay writing. These are words that have become placeholders, they become overused, and they oftentimes inflate language too much. They're, they're filler. So try to look for those areas where you're relying on those kind of nothing words and find a stronger verb or a stronger description to use in place of them. The titles, I saw some, some clever ones and some innovative ones. I would recommend that you, in addition to using a clever hook or title, that you also indicate the story and or the author that you're analyzing in your title. A lot of times in literary analysis you will see a clever title, colon, and then the author and the, the name of the piece you're analyzing, just so that as the reader goes through, they know what they're getting into before they've even read any of the paragraphs. The other major thing that I was seeing is the length of the papers. Take note on your rubric that I'm looking for a minimum of three pages, so that means three full pages. If it's about two and three quarters, fine, but if it's two and a half or two and one quarter, I'm going to start taking points off. It did take points off. So three full pages. Three pages is not long for a literary analysis. So try to find that extra body paragraph, those extra pieces from the text that help support your overall thesis. The other thing would be your works cited pages and your MLA formatting. So I provided all of you PDFs of my feedback on your essays, which included some corrections to various things. And a pretty uni universal theme is just formatting in MLA properly if you are using MLA format. So take note of my recommendations, check out the Owl Purdue as I've recommended in several videos, and when you do cite anything from the sources that you're analyzing within your essay, you have to include a, a reference to them in your works cited page. So you have to be, throughout all of these essays that you write, referencing in your works cited, the last page of your essay, the full citation for the piece or pieces that you are analyzing. So if you did Sherman Alexie's swipe patterns, he needs to be listed on your works cited page and the page numbers on which we find the short story need to be there as well. Your in-text citations will tell us the page numbers on which we find the passages for fiction, for poetry, as I said in one of my other videos, it should be line numbers. So I hope that helps. If you do have questions or concerns about any of the comments that I provided or the grade that you got or would like some pointers for things to do for your next essay, please do contact me and have a great rest of your week. Thanks. Bye.